In this video, I'm gonna be using my trusty Monport 90 watt CO2 laser to make a badass acrylic case for my custom keyboard PCB I designed in my last video. I'm also gonna share some tips and tricks I picked up along the way, so make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we get into it, I want to give a huge thanks to Monport for sponsoring this video and for sending me this machine. If you're interested in getting one like it, there's a link in the description where you can use the code MODHOB to get 8% off your order. Now, if you're watching this video, it hopefully means you've already designed your own keyboard PCB, which means you'll likely have a design from KeyboardLayoutEditor.com. If not, then make sure to go back and watch my first video on this topic because you're going to need that data for the next step. You're going to want to copy the raw data from KLE and paste it into AIO3's plate generator and then go through and set all the settings to match your keyboard. For example, 19.05 would be the standard unit height and width for most keyboards, but chalk switches would need 18 by 17 millimeters. When everything looks the way you want it to, you can go ahead and download the DXF and you're ready for the next step. A good alternative to AIO3's plate generator is Kibio's. Both are made by active contributors to the mechanical keyboard community, so use whichever one you prefer. Once you have your DXF file, we're also going to export the 3D model of your PCB from whatever software you prefer. I use KiCad, but most PCB software should support some form of 3D model export, so we're going to go to File, Export, and then click Step to export the step file for our PCB. If you have a simple board, you don't necessarily need to do this, but I usually find it speeds things up in Fusion 360, which is a good segue because that's the next step. Once you've uploaded your 3D models to Fusion 360, go ahead and create a new drawing and insert that 3D model into your new drawing. That way I can reference the actual 3D model of my board to build the case around it. Now the first thing that I like to do is to create a plane that's offset 3.5 millimeters from the surface of the PCB. That 3.5 millimeters just comes from the difference between the 5 millimeters the cherry switch needs and the 1.5 millimeters of my plate. Next, I'm going to insert the plate DXF I downloaded earlier onto my new plane so that I can manipulate it and create new extrusions from it. It's going to insert it so that the top left of the DXF is aligned with the origin of my design, but I need the switch cutouts to align with the holes on the PCB. The easiest way that I have found to do this is to go back in and edit the sketch that gets created when you import the DXF, find the center point of one of the switch cutouts, and align it to the center hole for one of the switches on the PCB. It doesn't take too long to get the hang of this, but it is a bit of a manual process, so if you have a better way of doing this, let me know in the comments and I will be sure to adopt that into my process as well. From here, designing the rest of the case is going to vary from person to person. My design is pretty simple, so I just copied over the board outline and mounting holes, and then made a small cutout for my OLED display. Then I just had to extrude it 1.5 millimeters, and my plate was done. I pretty much followed the same process for the base by creating an offset plane from the bottom of the PCB, and then copying over all of the contents of the plate, minus the switch cutouts. I could then extrude that new sketch to a quarter inch, which is the thickness of my base plate, and I'm ready for the next step. Now, I'm pretty much done with the Fusion 360 portion of this project, but I need to convert these 3D models into a format that my laser can understand. I use Lightburn to control my lasers, but it doesn't know what to do with a 3D model, so I need to convert these back to a DXF which Lightburn can work with. Again, the easiest way that I have found to do this is to just create a new sketch onto the surface of your model, and then project all of the geometry onto that new sketch. I'll then save that sketch and create a new sketch following the same process for the base plate. I can then save each sketch by right clicking and selecting save as DXF and giving it a meaningful name. Next, inside of Lightburn I'm going to click file, import, and then select one of the new DXF files I just created. Now just repeat that for the other DXF file and you should be ready to set up the cutting operations. I'm going to do a bit of a time warp here. I've gone ahead and added a few other designs to spice up my base plate, and I also created a new design for the foam insert to hopefully make the switches a bit more thocky, as they say. But since every laser is going to require different parameters for cutting and engraving, you'll need to reference your laser's manual for the proper settings. Before you send these off to your laser, it's usually a good idea to preview the operation using the little computer monitor button in the toolbar. And 
While we're at it, tip number one is to use libraries in Lightburn. With all the different materials and material thicknesses, there are a million different settings to keep track of, and rather than managing some spreadsheet somewhere, you can simply add any new materials to your library directly in Lightburn, and then assign them to your cuts with the click of a button. Adding new libraries is super easy. You can either create a new one from scratch and enter all the settings manually, or if you've already got some layers set up in your project, you can click the Create New From Layer button and save it in your library automatically. With all my cuts set up, it's time to head over to my laser and fire it up. The first cut I'm going to make is for the plate, which will be made out of 1.5mm cast acrylic. Again, this process is going to vary depending on what type of laser you have, but this Monport has an autofocus sensor that is super handy. So all I gotta do is put the work material in, select the autofocus option, and the laser will automatically set the appropriate height for cutting. Overall, this cut took less than five minutes and the results were great, but you'll notice that when I take the finished plate out of the laser, it has a good bit of flex to it. I was a little bit worried about this, but as I'll show later, it ended up not being an issue at all. I used soldered on switches, so the plate and the PCB worked together to make the finished keyboard fairly sturdy. Next, I'm going to be cutting the base plate out of quarter inch acrylic, but this is the perfect time to mention tip number two use cast acrylic, not extruded acrylic. It has something to do with the internal structure of the acrylic, but extruded acrylic doesn't cut for shit. Also, make sure to check the reviews on any acrylic you buy because sometimes it's labeled as cast acrylic when clearly it's not. Anyways, once I finally got cast acrylic, I was able to autofocus the laser and then start the cut. But I forgot to turn the laser to on, so I did that, started over, and I was able to cut out the base plate. I want to say this cut took about 8 minutes and the results were awesome. Tip number 3 here is to not cut your clear acrylic on a honeycomb pattern like this. The laser ended up bouncing off the top of the honeycomb and leaving some artifacts in the cut. I think it actually looks kind of cool so I'm not too upset about it, but if you want a super clean cut, consider putting another material under your acrylic. The last thing to do for this base plate before it's ready for assembly is to add a small chamfer to each of the mounting holes on the bottom. That way the mounting bolts can sit flush and not scratch up my desk. The last cut I needed to make was some 3mm pour on foam. This will go between the plate and the PCB and should hopefully help to cut down on some vibrations and some noise, giving the keyboard an overall better sound. This stuff was super stinky to cut, so make sure to have really good ventilation while you're cutting it, and maybe don't stand in the same room like I did. With all the laser cutting done, I'm finally ready to assemble this thing. You'll notice that I'm using M3 10mm long standoffs to mount the base and the plate together, and while I probably could have gone a little bit shorter for a lower profile board overall, I actually like the way that it turned out. I think it looks pretty good. With the assembly completely done, the very last thing to do is to flash the custom QMK firmware that I wrote, and this keyboard is done. Overall, this keyboard turned out amazing, and it is my daily driver, but I do have some problems with it, so let's talk about that. First, on the edge of the base here, you'll notice those little artifacts I was talking about. I think they ended up looking kind of cool, but if you don't want that, then make sure to use a backing material. Second, I know I designed it myself, but I don't love the layout. For one thing, I wish I had dedicated arrow keys, but more importantly, I couldn't actually fill all the switches with a single set of keycaps due to the different row profiles. I did end up with a crap ton of macro keys, which is awesome, but try to keep an existing keycap set in mind when you're designing your layout. 
But that's part of why I enjoyed this project. I got to learn so much in the process and all of it was way more fun and less confusing than I thought it would be. Anyways, that's it for this video. Huge thanks to Monport for sponsoring. And if you wanna pick up one of these machines, check out the link in the description and use the code ModHob to get 8% off your order. Let me know what you thought of this keyboard down in the comments and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.